Okay, we are live doing an impromptu test, not test, test. but a stream with my buddy Ted Judy here. I'm Hello. excited about it. Uh, we were just talking about what are we going to talk about? We don't know. We were told by the folks here at Aquashella they really want to hear your fish keeping journey, your story. You're a well traveled guy when it comes to fish keeping, so. My fish keep, like, like, like how far back do you want to go? The Paleolithic? <laughs> So you want to go back? You want to go back before aquariums actually existed. Listen, Once upon a time, there was a single cell. If it, <laughs> <laughs> if it were up to me, we would just talk about custom aquariums the whole time. Oh, but I don't yeah. know. I don't yeah. know if that's what they want us to do. Uh, but because I'm, you know what? I'm just going to break the rules. I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk about custom aquariums for a minute. Okay. Because I just got my new filter from you. The video's coming out in a couple of weeks. Nice plug. I, well, yeah, and and plug for you too. That's why we pay him. I, they do not pay me one dime, not a dime. <laughs> okay, we don't pay him anything. <laughs> I was completely impressed and blown away and happy when I found the new overflow from the filter sock tower to the sump. Right. Yeah. So what we had the issue with that old system was, if you're familiar with the custom aquarium's product line, it was an elbow that would. Uh, overflow into the baffle tub. So the Sigma sump system is a component system. We take all the different aspects of a sump system, break it into different types of tubs so you can mix and match and make them whatever you want. But that overflow system was very, very effective and had a good flow rate, but it was a little clunky, but it also caused the filter system to be taller than we really want it to be. So the new system, now that overflow is integrated, it's a tighter seal, less splash, less noise, and actually has a greater volume flow that you can keep into it. Um, and you don't have all the extra parts of the of the elbows, and it, you'll notice it can be a little bit shorter, a little more squat, and less potential leaks too. Even though I've got two of those sumps with the old system, never had a leak from those, right? Ever, it's still less potential leaks. I love yeah, that. Anytime you have a bulkhead, you have a potential for a leak. And right. Yeah, that's just the way it is. Right? When I got my newest 240, you asked me, "Do I want one of the sub sumps?" And I said, "No, I got it. I'm going to do a DIY." I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this a long time. And Ted said, okay. Sure enough, six months later, I'm like, um, I think I need that filter now. And, so. I am, and I'm professional and supportive enough to not call him on the first day he posted <laughs> that video and tell him, dude, that's not going to work. I think I waited two days. Yeah. Yeah. It did work, but it was getting the two of those balanced is impossible to right. do. That was the issue. They did work. It was getting it balanced. Right. It was very difficult to run two different sump systems on one aquarium and have them, one end up not overflowing or getting right. deeper. It's just, it's just too much of it. Now, if you had tied them together, but you'd had to drill the tanks. Which, if you tie them together, because we do that on our sumps all the time, you can daisy chain the sumps together, but you have to, you have to put pipes between them so the water can balance between the sumps as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know what? You listen to the pros the first time, you don't have to go through all of that nonsense, but I was very, very happy that we were able to work that out. And I am, I love the seamless sump system. It's not that I didn't get it because I didn't want it, because I didn't like it. I just wanted to try something different and it was a huge mistake. Well, I if with that if um, everybody's coming down to Aqua Shell, we actually are, are showing a couple of new um, adaptations to the seamless sump system here at the show. We have our, our skimmer tub for those people who are into the reef systems. Uh, reef systems, internal skimmers, with sumps are always kind of a fun challenge because you have to get the water depth just right for the skimmer. And so the way most people do that is they, they put the skimmer in the tub and then they drill that tub to, or drill the sump to allow for the water level to be a certain height. So what we've done instead is we have put together a sump system that's got multiple levels. You put a plate in and that will raise the skimmer up or down depending upon how much water depth the uh, the skimmer needs. The advantage of that is the amount of water that's in the skimmer tub is always going to be the same. And it's set up on the overflow system. So it's an integrated sock tub with a skimmer. So the water goes into the socks and then the skimmer can be adjusted up or down. Then it overflows in the system like that. Then the other one that we brought with us is our new low profile sumps. Palliodariums are really big now. People are really into them. So what people want to do is they want to have this big, tall palliodarium with a little itty bitty short stand. Right. 
and you see this big, huge enclosure, and people say, okay, well, that needs a lot of filtration. But really, it doesn't, because you've got a 500-gallon palladarium, but you only have 100 gallons water. That much water, water. right. Um, so we don't need as big a sump under it, and the low boy stand. So we basically took our, our sock tub and our baffle tub, and we cut them down. So instead of being needing, say, 27 inches inside the stand, now you can do it with only 17 inches inside the stand, so you don't have to be quite as, quite as much space. Nice, so nice. The next sprint, hopefully someday, we'll get to the point where we're actually going to get a one that is more, but it's more narrow, so they can go inside, say, a 13-inch stand. We haven't quite gotten that far yet. Well, I, this is where I would typically say, because I'm supposed to be interviewing Ted. This is your show. And this is where I would normally say, so what do you think of the show so far? But it's only been going on for an hour, so right. <laughs> I think, can't really I do think, that. Uh, I, think, I think the show needs you, needs everybody. It does. Come on down. It's a good show. It's always a good show. I, you know, you probably shouldn't say this on the internet, but I would say, get here while you can before everything shuts down again. Right? I, I hope that doesn't happen, but... It's not going to happen. I hope not. I hope you're right, but... Everybody's here, it's safe, we're all good, it's fine, and it's a blast so far. We do need to talk about Ted's Fish Room, though. Oh my. That's what I was asked to talk about. Okay. Your Ted's Fish Room that no longer exists, but. It exists, <laughs> I just don't, that's no content. So we, we had this discussion earlier, we were talking about YouTube. I've come to these events uh, and to Aquashellas now, I think this is my fifth Aquashella with the company, and, and I always joke about fish too because I, I, I'd say this very jokingly to, to Robert and everybody else around is um, uh, I've never been invited to attend one of these as a YouTuber. As Ted Fishroom. <laughs> as a YouTuber. So um, I think it's because they know that it's not really what I do anymore. But the channel is still there. I'm very proud of the content that's on the channel. I, uh, I got where I was posting more during the, the COVID shutdowns as I was trying to continue to create kind of find something to do. And then once our company started running again, I, I kind of ran out of time. And I've kind of decided that I think that the content's not going to go anywhere. And uh, this is, I'll, I'll announce it to the world. Everyone else knows. I'm actually retiring this year. I'm actually going to be moving on to new opportunities and new things outside of the aquarium industry. And, uh, Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's a it's a real exciting time for us and my family. So we're looking forward to it. And uh, are you going to move to King George, Virginia? No. Oh, no. <laughs> you no, been no, there. no. It's a it was place. it was number two or three on the list. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I grew up in Fairfax County, Virginia, so I I, I, I spent my my time there. I paid. You my had tenants. enough. You have enough time uh, there. Yeah. Yep. The traffic is bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that being said, um, the I kind of lost my train of thought. You, you were know, talking Ted about fish Ted's Fish Room. You you're you're retiring, right. so you'll be able to create more content. Oh, then. that's right. So, so so the joke. Okay, so you're you're a YouTuber. I said, yeah. Well, these people say, well, how long have you been a YouTuber? So I, I finally I just I said I completely forgot. I posted my first fish related video on Ted's Fish Room channel on December 25th, so Christmas Day, 2009. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's what? Almost 12, 12 years. years. Wow. Almost 12 years. Okay. And so, and I, and I tell you what, I've been so aggressive at it, I've managed in 12 years to hit almost 15,000 subscribers. <laughs> Thank you very much for the support. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something though. This, his channel, even though you're not, you haven't been putting out a whole lot of stuff, is one of the more educational channels out there. Thank I mean, you. I appreciate when, that. When I built my first fish room in like 2010, I used your videos a lot to build that. And then I'm now I'm sitting here with the guy. It's still it's still weird. I've spent the night in his house. Yeah, I didn't you mean made for that it to weird. get weird, but that that's doesn't mean to be weird. But that we're friends now, and that's cool. Like I would have never imagined that then, but I did. When it comes to like airline plumbing and all that kind of stuff, building a fish room. I got a lot of information from your channel. That was I think, awesome. I think what YouTubers today get most about the channel is they go back and they look at 12 years of really bad video and audio content and they say, oh gosh, please don't let my channel look and sound like that. The thing is, at the time, 
That was really good. I mean, I know, nobody was year, putting out. This is a year ago. Oh. This is bad a year. It's bad well. a year ago. <laughs> so, no, it, it, it is what it is. I, like I said, I am proud of the content. The content's not going to go anywhere. Um, the, uh, but I don't think that I will continue with making making fish related content. I'm not. I have two aquariums, two right now, and one is going to be donated to the uh, um, uh, the Cataclysm Catfish Convention, and I'm going to put a plug for that in Madison, Wisconsin. Which, if you're into the hobby club related aquarium events, uh, catfish, cichlids as well, mostly catfish. That event is going to take place the weekend of October, I think 12, 13, 14, in Madison, Wisconsin. Cataclysm, it's a great event. We've got great speakers lined up. Those types of hobby events are just now coming back online. So there's been a few this past summer, but um, if you're looking for something to come and visit, we have speakers coming from all over the world, all over the nation. We have people coming from the West Coast, East Coast, could come from Europe, they come from overseas to this event. The turnout is always really good. We have lots of catfish that we bring in for the auctions. We have vendors. Um, it's it's the we do only do it every two years, opposite years from the All American Catfish Convention they hold in Virginia, which is different than our event, but they're they're kind of the same kind of thing. Uh, but Cataclysm is back, and I hope everybody has the opportunity to check it out and get to it. And what the 180 gallon aquarium I have, I'm donating that to that event. They'll raffle it or sell it or auction out. Know what they're going to do. Uh, that one's going there and then the other aquarium the big 265 is actually going to a local pet store to have as their display tank so so you're not only retiring from work but you're retiring from the hobby you're you're out well, you're we're selling go. the house and i can't take it with me oh wow so, so we're selling the house we're going to be in one place for a few months we're going to be in another place for three months and then we're homeless. We don't hope that something will find out between then and there. But uh, well, you know where I live in Virginia, you can... right? I figure we have enough people that uh, <laughs> that uh, owe us at least one night. I was about to say I owe you at least one night on a blow-up mattress. We'll be able to make it. Got to do that. So, okay. yeah, we're actually live on YouTube right now. Can I, can I say hi? <laughs> uh, sure. No, I, 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 yeah, it's kind of our thing here. If you don't no, mind, no, it's fine. <laughs> no big deal. They don't. They need a big live sign or something. <laughs> I guess they don't want to be rude about it. Thank you. Yeah, that just happened. Okay. Um, <laughs> There's no questions popping through. Y'all need, listen, this guy is a wealth of knowledge, knows a hundred times more about fish keeping than I do. You got to put your questions through for Ted. I don't know how long we're going to be doing this, but there's, there's plenty of info up there and you can get it out of him for sure. It's, like I said, I learned how to build a fish room because of you. Thank you. Well, and those videos are still pretty old. I've had people say that. They talk about the racking video, they talk about the air in the fish room video. Um, some of the more modern ones, you know, hooking up water systems, water chain systems, that's all in there. Yep. Uh, my, uh, you know, my take on sponge filtration, why I use sponge filtration, how I clean sponge filters, all that stuff's in there. Um, there's a lot of fish stuff too. There's a lot of travel stuff. Um, you know, I've had the very fortunate opportunity to have visited uh, Cameroon, Gabon, Colombia several times, Peru a couple times, Mexico, and those trips are documented in there. But no one likes travel logs. Those are the least viewed videos on my channel, which Isn't I think is shame? hilarious. People say, oh, you know, why do you make them? No one watches them. I make them because I want to make them. Right. Because I, it's my way of going back and saying, ah, oh, I remember when that happened. So. Yep. It's, it's a documentation of the trip. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I. I've got one for you. Okay. Lisa and I, we want to, my fantasy is we're going to move. You've been to my house. My, my property is pretty small. We can't expand our business on the property. Uh, you were there at night though, so you didn't see the yard, but who cares? Uh, we want to move and then I want to build her a beta house. I call them betas. You call them whatever you want to call a she them. she shed for betas? Yes, but it, it's going to need to be like a 24 by 24 or so. I want to build it from the ground up, show it all on YouTube. Nobody will probably watch it, but that's what I want to do. It is absolutely critical that I come up with a water changing system for a thousand beta tanks. Little, probably one gallon cubes. How would you approach that? Do, do they do they, does each individual cube need to be its own entity? Yes. What, let me tell you what I was thinking and you can tell me if I'm wrong. I was thinking each rack have its own sump, perform the water changes 
in the sump. Like drain the sump and then refill the sump and there's our water change. Do that more frequently since it would only be, like if you use like a, maybe like a 75 gallon tank and you have a hundred. How big are these tanks gonna be? Maybe a gallon. Okay, so here's how I would do it. I would, what I, want. I would double drill the bottom, okay? So you have two holes in the bottom of the tanks and then put a little bulkhead in each one and have one of those, uh, a stand pipe that's got sponge over it. So it's got like a pre-filter. So keep the fish from getting sucked to it. Right. And that is going to be your water change drain. Okay. You'll have that hooked to a valve. So you turn a valve, all the water inside of it's going to drain down to that. Okay. It's manual. You don't automate it. Just walk in there and go, you can automate it, but then you talk talking solenoids and but right. if, you, if you set it up like per row or per rack, you could set it up per tank if you wanted to and have a million little valves. I think I would probably set it up where a whole rack or a whole row is on one and you just drop them all at the same time. Then the other one, you go up to the top as deep as the water wants to be, put a little piece of sponge on to keep the sick, to get the fish from going out of that. And that is so that when you refill those, you turn your, your pump on to refill those things, you don't have to worry about them refilling evenly so right. water can overflow into that little one down the road. So you just turn it on and then as soon as your your sump is done, maybe time it a couple times, see how long it takes, everything to fill up. Or maybe you just have it an auto fill that water ages and then when you run your water change, you're gonna put every ounce of water in that sump through that system and then when it's done, um, it's it's done. You know, put a float valve so the pump goes off. Let me tell you what I like about that idea. I could do that without a sump. Yeah, unless you want to age the water. Well, and the, the only thing is, the reason why I wanted to do a sump is so that we don't have to heat the room to 84 degrees. So I could put heaters in the sumps and, and run it all, but then you run into, but, okay, I mean. So, the, so, so what you've just done though, is you have, you've contradicted what I asked you earlier. I asked you if all the tanks are going to be connected and if water is going to be flowing through them, and you said no. So you said water change system, but what you're really talking about is you want a central filtration system. Well, uh, let me try to clarify. Okay. What I want, what excuse me, what she wants, I'm pointing to Lisa, everybody, is to be able to turn some valves, flick some switches, and do water changes instead of going to each individual one. Right. And so my original idea was to do a sump for each one, put the heaters down in there so we don't have to heat the room, because that's what we're doing now and it's miserable. And then be able to, you know, you got like a 75 gallon tank, let's say there's 50 gallons in there. You got a hundred gallons worth of tanks because there's maybe a hundred on each rack. So if you're doing a 50% water, or if you're draining the sump out, which is 50 gallons, you're doing a 33% water change. Okay. And so it is a recirculating system. Everything is connected in that one particular rack. But I really like your idea of the two standpipes. That way you can just turn the drain valve on and walk away, right. let them all drain down, and then refill it. And again, I love the overflow drain, and so you don't have you to can, worry you about can do it. That upper, you could even do these on the back. You don't have to do it on the bottom. You can do it on the backs if you want. Right. But okay, so. But then so we'd have when to you're not the room. when you're not doing a water change, you have to drill the bottom anyway. You're going to drill no matter what. Okay. So it'll be um, acrylic, so it'll be easy. Yeah, acrylic. Oh, so <laughs> easier than but glass. Anyway, okay. So, but in between those water change, it, are you actually going to filter these tanks with water going from the sump up into the aquarium and back? If we were to do the sump system, yes. Okay. But what what I would love to do is not do the sump system. But then where are we, how are we going to heat the tanks? You're going to heat the room. And that's what, that's what I don't want to do. And she doesn't want to do that either. So it's almost like the yeah. subsystem would have to be a thing. Okay, so now you're talking about a central filtration system. And, and, and in that situation, I would not do the double drain. You're going to have an inflow and an outflow anyway. Right. If you're going to centrally filter, all right, then what I would really do is I would have it set up that you can turn off the pump that's going to the tanks and you can then shunt the water that's going from the pump into a drain 
and then do all your water changes from the sump. So put a 100 gallon sump under there, drop all 100 gallons in the sump, refill it back up, dechlorinate it, because bettas, you know, they can go 24, 48 hours a year without a filter. <laughs> um, so you can then uh, just let the water heat up and stuff, and then you can turn it, you can return the valve and turn it on for central filtration. If you're, well, gonna, if you're gonna do a central filtration. Well, and the only reason I would do the central filtration is to put, be able to put heaters in there. I mean, because it's miserable in that room right now. It's 85 degrees, it's horrible. I don't wanna be in there. She gets used to it. She gets in there and she's just banging away, but I would rather have it nice in the room. And then my thought also was IBC totes, be able to treat the water, get the water to temperature, maybe in another room. Have you been to Discus Hans in Baltimore? Oh yeah. So basically what I'd wanna do is copy his system on a much smaller scale. Okay. Because the way he has it, he's got all those 75 gallon tanks and he's got a sump that spans the entire rack. And then he has those giant pool pumps that he just drains the sumps all the way out, refills them and he's done. Right. And refills them from IBC totes that are treated. He has to manually treat it, which who cares? They're already up to temperature and it's, it works beautifully and it works with a super fragile fish, which discus are not fragile, but they're, they're not as hardy as betas maybe, but I don't know. I probably just started a huge argument, but discus are not hard to keep folks, but I'm saying it works out beautiful for him to right. do that. So I was thinking about doing the exact same thing on a smaller scale, which is exactly what you just said. So if Ted says to do it that way, that's how I'm going to do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but uh, that's the most basic, simple way to do it. I really do like the idea of the two standpipes, though. Then you don't have to run a sump system and all of that. But then you're heating the room, and I don't want to do that. Okay. I mean, that's... So there we go. You just designed my system. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Send me a bill. Lisa will pay it. Oh, you know I will. <laughs> so are we staying in Wisconsin when you retire, or...? No, 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 no. Winters are far too long in Wisconsin. So we already spend our winters away from Wisconsin. Okay. We've done that for a couple of years and we spend four months or so in Florida. We spend, we actually last year we spent three months in North Carolina and then we're going to do something similar this year. But then at the end of that, uh, in May, when we normally come back to Wisconsin, then we'll hopefully have decided either where we're going to go next or whether we're going to buy a place somewhere. We, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, like I said, winters are nowhere near as harsh in Virginia. You know that. Yes. <laughs> Yes, maybe you could get a place next door to us, and I'll keep you in the you know, hobby. You know that you know that the uh, um, I don't know if they still do, but it, the English the embassy in Washington D.C. used to pay all of their employees tropical hardship pay for living in Northern Virginia in the summer. What? <laughs> that's, I mean, it gets humid, but come on. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, actually, I like I like parts of Virginia on the western side. I'm gonna go to the mountains. I like I like the mountains. We've looked all around. I mean. Real estate is absurd. I, I feel like the only way we're gonna be able to really do what we wanna do is build something new. Not us build it, but have a new house built. I, I don't know that we're gonna be able to do it any other way. Right. But the fantasy, see this is why you need to buy a property right next to us. You can help me build the beta house. That'd be perfect. Don't you want to? <laughs> sure, I would help you. <laughs> Ted's I'd trying to be nice you. right now. I don't, here's an idea, I think, we'll, I think we'll buy an RV and we'll just drive around offering our services to help my friends build fish room stuff. I love that idea. That's yeah. great. Put me on that's the calendar. Good. I just don't know when it's going to be yet. Right. <laughs> that's, I that's... say just have everything in place so I can turn the switch and say it's done. There you go. That's perfect. I want turnkey fish room help. <laughs> I want to walk in and just be critical whenever you finish. You did this wrong. And payment? No, there's no payment. You do this because we're friends. That's we, right. Of course. We don't have I to send a bill. I wouldn't charge you anything. <laughs> It's not, the advice isn't worth anything, so why would I charge you? No, I would trust whatever you say about building a fish room, keeping fish. I've said it a million times, you know a whole lot more about fish keeping than I do, so. Okay, thank you. What do we talk about next? I don't know, you have any questions? <laughs> I was looking for some and I didn't see any. No. I've got to, uh, I gotta find somebody here, let's see. People are. People are talking. There's 42 people in there right now. All right. But nobody's changing. Nobody's asking questions. Yeah, you ask questions. Uh, Zen Ginger is just said. The question was, do we ask questions? Uh, and they are. They can be to either one of us. 
this is kind of Ted's show. I was asked to interview Ted. The problem is I've interviewed Ted like 20 times, so I don't, I don't know what to ask. Right. Let's, okay, I got a breaking news thing. You talked about there's another expansion happening with custom aquariums. Um, yes. Uh, it's or not, custom cages. It's, it's, it's another Band-Aid. Um, you know, custom aquariums has custom cages and vision products combined. So uh, two years ago, we built a, a what we call a 13,000 square foot Band-Aid, which created a space for us to um, expand mostly the vision product line. And that completely filled in, the warehouse is completely full. So now we're building about another 10,000 square foot Band-Aid cold storage just to hold stuff. Wow. Um, but um, right now, um, other than the changes to the seamless sump, which I described earlier, uh, right now, we're really concentrating kind of on the reptile side. That's where a lot of demand is. Plus, you know, we bought the Vision product line uh, three years ago. Yes, Robert. Yes, have you guys tried a no water change system? No water change system. That's Personally. kind of the opposite of what we were talking about. <laughs> no, but I mean, probably the question is probably coming from somebody that's thinking about more like on the reef side. So the thing about the reef hobby is that they are far advanced from the freshwater hobby when it comes to water conservation and water management because the water, salt water costs you so much money. You buy a big thing of salt from, from Fritz here and you want to keep that salt for as long as possible and not have to spend any more money. So what, what has the reef hobby come up with? They've come up with you know, uh, you know, better micron filtration. They've come up with better chemical filtration. They've come up with um, a really good um, ion resin filtration. You have algae scrubbers. You have all these ways to capture and export nutrient out of the water and then clean that water so you can continue using it. And there are people, like we have a, one of the uh, guys who has a custom aquariums reef tank, has a little YouTube channel doesn't do much on it, but you know, early on he was sharing a lot on it. He has a reef tank that is no water change. The last time I talked to him, it had been uh, almost three years since he had done anything other than add RO water to the system. Wow. So the quick question is, is that possible in fresh water? Yes, it's possible in fresh water, but then the next question comes around, but why? <laughs> because here in the United States, fresh water is so cheap. Right. You know, it, it is very inexpensive. And this idea of flow through water changes and drip water changes and so forth, people just go, ah, fresh water. But take a look at the world around us. It's going to change. I've been to Germany. In Germany, they pay a lot for water. There are fish warehouses, you know, wholesalers out there. I've been to their warehouse where they've got the you know big square carboys all along one wall where they are cleaning and reusing the fresh water in their system because the cost of fresh water is so high. We, we can get there. It can happen in this country right. too as we have a, a greatly reducing the quality of our water and access to water and droughts and heating and all that kind of stuff. So we I think it's a freshwater hobby. We should think about how can we how can we get to where we have a freshwater system that is that is that is no water change? Fundamentally, it's going to be the same. It's going to be finding filtration resins that are going to absorb uh, ion waste and finding ways to export nutrient. There's no reason you couldn't use algae scrubbers. You can't use plant refugiums like uh, you do with um, you know uh, you know algae scrubbers and and algae refugiums and salt water. The pond hobby is actually way ahead of, of us on this because um, what big uh, one of the fun things in ponds are you know these bogs you know where you take water from a, from a pond and you take a certain portion of it and you run it through a bog that's just completely loaded with plants right then as the water moves very slowly from one side of the bog to the other it comes out very clean because the plants pull the nutrients out of it and throw it away and where do the nutrients go? They're in the tissues of the plant. And then if you need, you can then get rid of the plants. And that's that's what they mean by export. You're taking that nutrient, locking it into something you can then dispose of differently, and the water comes out cleaner. So uh, I've never done it for fresh water personally, 
but it, it could be done. Uh, and, the, and the person who finds a way to do it and do it efficiently, I think, have really has something that could be very valuable to the hobby. Maybe that could be a, a retirement job for you. <laughs> on the topic, sure. I, w I want to expand on the topic of ponds because you and I were somewhere last night that just absolutely oh, blew my mind. Yeah. But before we get into that, though, uh, back to the water changes. Have you ever heard of Live Fish Direct, or have you ever been to their facility? Oh, in Rhinelander? In Draper, Utah. No, I'm, not, I'm thinking about a different one. What, what's, what's the one in Rhinelander? I have no Live idea. Aquaria. Okay, yeah. yeah this okay. is Live Fish Direct. It's somebody I've had a relationship for years. With year, for years, they're an African cichlid farm as well as a retailer. Oh, yeah, I know who they are. Yep. They have, and it, like, this is the opposite of what you were just talking about with reusing water. They have an unlimited supply of water from a natural spring. Right. And instead of having recirculating systems and all of this, they basically pump fresh water from that stream into every tank in the facility right. nonstop, 24-7. You, 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 you're, you're describing most of the fish farming that happens in Florida where they're bringing the water out of the ground and going into the vats and and the water goes out the other end and goes down through the water table and gets clean. Like a, um, like a natural a, there's bog? A, there's a, uh, a person who, I'm assuming he still does, I, I don't know, Charles, I'm sorry, I haven't kept up with it. Uh, Charles Clapp Saddle in, 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 in Texas who raises live bears and raises African cichlids. He just has a greenhouse that he built over a, a, a subfloor pond and bat system that he has mangroves growing at the far end. All the water goes in, the mangroves clean He it, is still doing it. I've and seen he works it and, and he reuses, reuses that water. I mean, so it is happening on an industrial scale. Um, it might actually be something that's easier to do on an industrial scale uh, than it is on a small micro scale. Yep. I, I mean, that's a dream to just not have to worry about it. Just let it do its thing, and there you go. You're still going to have to wipe algae. Yeah, well, you're never going to get away from that. Right. Aquascape last night, or I should, we should call it Aqualand, because that's what they call it. The company is Aquascape, right? Oh, yeah. Is it? I was, was that your first time being there? Oh, yeah. I've never been so overwhelmed in my life. That place is incredible. I felt like it was the fish keeping version of Google. Well, I thought that the ponds were beautiful. The water features are fantastic. They have almost a mini zoo in there. There's aquariums and pythariums everywhere. But I think that really, I, I kind of, I kind of realized it was like the place to be was the indoor soccer pitch. I know <laughs> the basketball court. You know the weight room, The weight room that'll rival most high school weight rooms. You know, the racquetball court. You know, yeah, okay. So when do you get any work done? Sorry, boss. I've got a <laughs> soccer game. The league starts next hour. Okay. We went in there. There was four of us. Uh, the, the guy, the weirdo right over there with the blue hair. We were playing basketball for about five minutes. He ended up on the ground like four times. I said, we have to quit. We have to stop. Somebody's going to get hurt. This is outrageous. We all had to sign waivers in case we did get hurt. But I wondered why we had to sign a waiver. <laughs> I thought in case you had fell into a pond. Or something. But no, it's in case you decide to go out there and like, Pull a muscle Be an trying idiot. to play basketball. <laughs> yeah, I had to cut it off because it was uh, it was not going to be pretty. But that that place, you're right. I mean, first of all, the pond outside. I I don't even know how to describe that. Did you go see thing. the water feature garden? Where was that? There there's lot outside. There's lots of little gardens around there, but uh, they have. Um, look, if you've come through, you come through the um, uh, the entryway here at Aquashella. You seen the big urn? Yeah, 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 yeah. They have all kinds of things like that. Okay. Escapes. Yeah. I didn't see that, but I saw the uh, kind obviously of idea, kind of an idea garden. Okay. For water features, little ponds, water features, fountains, all kinds of stuff like that. I was at the big pond and you know went up on the big rocks overlooking the whole thing and did, went into the grotto and all that. Did you see the sandbox? I don't think I did. Okay, so down in the basement. Jeez. They, they, they have a facade of a house, like a, a, a front of a house, the front porch, and then across this big, huge, giant sandbox, they have like a, another little building, and there's a fake trees in it. And what they do is they invite creators, the pond designers, you know, from around to to come up with their dream pondscape, and then they'll build it and show them what it looks like. It's like having okay. So if you do aquascape, if you do aquascaping. 
and you've got this cool little box where you stack Staging box. Wood. Yep. Okay, now imagine that on a, you know, 75 foot by 75 foot by 20 foot tall room with the buildings size. It's like a movie set for building <laughs> ponds. Oh, hey, let's just, let's go play in the sand. <laughs> Greg Whitstock, the pond guy, it's is incredible. doing it right. And, and they He's got doing some, it right. They've got some good YouTube channels. That's how you should get up here, is get up here and do a live stream of Greg Woodstock. What I'm going to try to do is get Brett Raymer up here, because I'm streaming at 6 o'clock with Tanner and Lisa, but Tanner is doing a skate off with Brett Raymer from the show Tanked. I'm sure you know right. who he is. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can track down Brett and get him up here with us. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know what got me off on that tangent, but that place... I've never been so overwhelmed, and I tell you what else I was, was inspired. Yes. Not only to branch off and, and explore more in the fish keeping hobby, but from a business standpoint, there you could fit two Home Depots inside of his warehouse. I mean, oh, I got, the, I got the actual number, by the way. 276. Yeah, two, yep. 276. 276,000 square feet is his, that's, and that's, that's just the, the footprint. Building. That's the whole building. That's yeah. not just the warehouse though. So the warehouse, I, I was way off. But you know, yeah, you, you guessed a little high there, but I that's the whole cubic. building. And that doesn't include the floors. Right. So when you add all of the square footage of the multiple floors, it's probably a half a million square feet. So you were probably right there. Right. But yeah, that's that place was absurd. I was inspired as a businessman to just be better at business. Or build ponds? Uh, maybe I maybe I chose the wrong line of work. Yeah, I don't know. We okay. have to keep talking because we don't have anybody that can stop the stream. So we got to figure something out here. Oh, I can just drop the mic and just walk away. Boop. Rob, retiring. Boop. You want to shut us down here? I think we're no. well. Not yet, yet. But let's all say goodbye though. Thank you. I know this was awkward. I mean, oh, it's not awkward. But it, it was, was fun. fun. This this guy is a wealth of knowledge. Listen, this is what needs to happen. Everybody that's watching this right now. Go to Ted's Fish Room, subscribe to the channel so that we can keep him in the hobby when he retires. Right. You can't let if him I go. hit 100,000 viewers by the end of the week and I'll make another video. <laughs> there you go. Let's you do can't that. do it. You do can't it. do it. You can't take me to 100,000 in two days. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a week. 100,000 viewers on Ted's Fish Room, let's do it. Get in there. Yeah, get me there. I want my plaque. <laughs> Thank you all they so all much for one. watching. This was fun. Thank, Thank you. you.